Oh, look at that armor! Uh, fucking cool! They were a veil. They fly now? They fly they now. Fly now. <laughs> the fell beast. Dive Do you know how they made the sound? I'll give everyone one guess. It's from an animal, but which one? Honey badger. No. Those things are fucking mental. Cat. No. Um. A bat? No. A bear. No, a donkey. He can fly! He can fly! fly. He can talk! <laughs> That's right, fool! Now I'm a flying talking donkey! Ooh, that was a, that was a slightly rough I'm shot there. Running. Yeah, that didn't look so great. Yeah, see, the way this is edited is a bit like those Easter yeah, would have seen the shit out of Frodo. <laughs> they need a huge like, rock in front of them for this seeing? to make sense. What are yeah. they seeing right now? Yeah. You know? Though I'll admit, like this, you won't expect it to be what we see, which is pretty cool in terms of uh, ammo. Yeah, they have, start, they have to cut away from it very quickly, yeah. otherwise you'd see what they did. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> they still oh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's I, satisfying. I pretty, pretty good. I totally appreciate it, yeah. I would have kept yeah. it on longer, but that's just me. I would have too, but, you know. I would have been like, let's wait until well, the Well, part of the problem is well, their plan is to in. run in here, right? Yeah, yeah. I doubt even these selfish cloaks allowed us in there. No! <laughs> Like, that's cool to look at, but the satisfying part is when you see him uncover it. But obviously, it's a, for filming purposes, a very different cloak. Don't take it to him! But, like, they're magic, right? Those, uh... Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. He wants their precious. Always. He's looking for it. it! Makes you think, like, if they just wrapped the cloaks completely around them, could they and just waddled forward. Unseen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I, like, what? Your what? There's a couple of boulders <laughs> heading towards us, but whatever. <laughs> You can tell, like, with the way that they've integrated them, having a practical sort of, uh, that they're sitting on, like, integrated then into the visual effects of the face. Yeah, because, yeah, he's all CG in the face, but practical in the branches, so it's, there's obviously yeah. a line blending. And then there's the background, too. It's like, this is not yeah. easy. No, but it's, it's like, when you see, like, the real thing, and you can't quite tell when it transitions into the digital creation, it kind of makes it, like easy to accept it as a well i mean obviously with some amount of like technical craft and hard work but it's just like the extra effort definitely helps do they still do rear screen projection in movie making these days at all like a newer version of it because volume is technically a newer version of it yeah but now i'm wondering like if we're gonna see less stuff using the volume because it's got such a bad reputation it's crazy the reputation was so high and it fucking plummeted in years It's insanely expensive. We talked about this earlier, but like doing CGI is way more expensive than just putting people in makeup now. You know, and crazy. It looks often worse. Yeah. Mm, it looks way worse. Edoras and the Golden Hall of Medusel. There dwells Theoden, King of Rohan. Well, and you'd think as well that practical could only improve over time because the understanding of makeup and new materials should only improve over time. You'd assume. But sometimes even practical stuff can be really disappointing. Sometimes it certainly can be. Solomon's hold over King Third and is now very strong. Look at the costumes. Like, everything looks aged in world. Your son. He is dead. Hyper detailed. Insane. Perfect irony in that you said everything looks aged while showing Theoden's yeah. old face. <laughs> ah, there you His go. His fake old face. <laughs> That'd be great. The elephants. The elephants. Oliphants. The big chongus elephants. Muma kill. It's such a cool, like, it's a cool yeah, design. Yeah, they look great. It's like, it's the ultimate, take a real animal, now make the fantasy version of it. Yeah, yep. and then you have like the big rickety platforms up top as well. <laughs> That was cool. <laughs> we should probably go. We yeah. should leave. I don't want to get fucking yeah. killed. That was really cool, though, what we saw. The young perish and the old linger. It's one of the first things that actually comes to my mind when I think about uh, this movie. This scene? Yeah, this one, yeah. Sedra's death was not of your making. I love the Battle of Helm's Deep. I think oh, that's I mean, my, my favorite battle in the whole trilogy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can pick, as far as I'm concerned, any of the films, and for many reasons. No parents should have to bury their child. Many favorite? different reasons as well, because Amon Hen obviously is quite different from Helm's Deep in terms of like a sort of climactic uh, battle. 
Which is very different from Pelnal Fields, and it's very different oh, from yeah. Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith. Yeah. Very different from the Black Gate. It feels like a lot of movies learn really bad lessons from Lord of the Rings in terms of, yeah, we need to have all of our armies, like, meet in a big charge, and then they just sort of fight each other in a field. <laughs> Well, so, not realizing that there's a lot of dynamism to the battles in Lord of the Rings. What I'm learning is like we say it sometimes as though it's a understood aspect that people would learn good things from good stuff. But I think it's much more typical that we have bad things learned from good things. Well, it's like they they get like the surface level of, oh, this is awesome. It's like, it is awesome, but it's all of the underlying character work and world building that really elevates it. As well yeah, as like, like a lot of much smaller decisions in the midst of, you know, the battles, like a lot of different elements of coordination, placement, strategy. Yeah, you never see like prop the most you get normally is just lip service to strategy. Like, oh, you do this and then we win. It's like, well, um, mm -hmm. no. This is but a taste of the terror that Saruman will unleash. When the Dark Knight, whatever the fuck it was called, the Long Knight was being released, it was being compared to Helm's Deep. And it was like, how the <laughs> fuck could you possibly compare? It's like, it well, sucked. it's big, it's long. Well, that was the hype, right? The hype leading up to it is this is going to be Game of Thrones, Helm's Deep, but then. Well, and, and now everyone <laughs> Hates it so now it is only unfavorably compared to Helm's Deep, which uh, well, and, yep. and Damn, if not man. referenced for the sake of saying like an army doing all of the worst possible decisions ever, By order of the king, the city must empty. We make for the refuge of Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep, do not burden yourself with treasures. It is just kind or of family members or relatives be like Harfoots, leave them all behind. The sick, the Helm's Deep is like the most associated, just uh, stronghold battle sequence that everyone adores. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool to reputation to have. Well, it's just something that is interesting is like, when making this film, how could they have known that it would all, you know, come together at the end, especially with all of the brand new techniques and technologies that they were employing? And, the, and this is after, okay, so this was much later. Look at later, the rats. So, look at yeah, the rats. Look at, yeah. look at look the rat. Him. It's a movie rat. Look at them. Look at yeah. the movie rats. They're having look such a great time. Look at them hanging out. Taking care oh, of I hope they, like I hope they get out of there. Yeah. I do as well. Oh. I think I they will. they'll probably be scared by the battle and all the Urukai. Not bad. Not bad. I was mm. just thinking that. It could have been better, but considering the time, it's all right. Yeah, it's uh, three point six Rotgen. It's over just quick enough that you don't think about it too much. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, dated shots are all we can you can nitpick at this now. Yeah, I'll take slightly like subpar visuals. <laughs> Slightly. With an amazing story, any day, any day. Kind of nice about the 4K say... editions. They uh, they kind of edited the coloring a little bit, so it looks a bit more natural in the 4K. The 4K versions are pretty damn good. Really fucking good. Yeah, because a lot of 4K stuff that's coming out is just garbage. It's yeah. hot garbage. There's like rush jobs. Well, it helps that they got the same team back, so that it's not just like the Buffy remaster where they oh. fucked it all up. Why did it have to be Buffy that got like the worst remaster ever? Right. And I gotta admit, look, it's okay, but none of them look as good as Treebeard. Well, no, he got all of the <laughs> he got all the effort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they got interesting beards themselves. They do. That's true. It's a lovely yeah, like, beard. Yeah, look at, look at that guy's man. beard on the right there. It's very pointy. It looks like he's got a bunch of arrows shot to his face. You guys look a bit floopy. Some of them just weren't as lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Some Treebeard's of them were clearly grafted. Treebeard is clearly the good looking He's one. the handsome he one. Good oh yeah, he's, he's, he's the handsome, handsome one. He's the one I'd fuck. He's the handsome tree. <laughs> Sound of the rain Actually, on the like armor. Actually, like to have seen. Yeah, you can hear it pattering it's off the steel. Dirty. It's just the fucking details. Oh, and the tension is just so building good. and building and building, and now it's uh, it really feels like we're here. All these dudes in outfits walking around under rain machines, getting cold and wet. Well, and again, we talked about the marriage of. Probably miserable to make um, this, and they made something amazing. There's only get. ever a maximum of 100 urukai. There's never more than that. So the rest you see are always CG. And my God, how would never they make fucking it look. know. They make it look great, especially, I mean, obviously the darkness helps on the rain. Yeah, and it's hard to pick out, like, individuals to really, you know, see. I love as well, like, every time you hear them marching, it's always in lockstep. It's always that mechanical. It just, like, ties in perfectly with, like, that whole industrialized uh, feel that you have with Isengard. Fun fact, they couldn't actually recruit enough men. People are for <laughs> six foot to play Urukai, right? Like, that's what they need, but they didn't have enough, so they ended up having to use people who were five foot high as well. And they were called Uruk Low. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dude, the breathing through the mask and the... Oh, I yeah. love that one, yeah. That was freaking good. 
you imagine how shit it would be so if your Azura oh, guy that has to go shit. up to him? It's like, I'm just gonna yeah. get fucking hacked down here, man. You just down, it's like, guys, can we switch? Can I switch Latin? No, push me up, alright. Oh, oh this, coming up with the this is actually the main door they made was made so well the battering ram which was real that they got couldn't take it down they had to weaken <laughs> the door they said uh, i think pia jackson said if i wanted to build an actual fucking fort i'd probably get wetter also i love that attaching each other back to back sort of thing oh you don't want to get your leg caught by that no you don't want to get right. shot by one of them. That would be yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, that would be really unfortunate if you got hit by one of It'd them. It'd be over really quick if you were hit by one. I think I read the guy who got hit by it uh, broke his leg when they do that sequence. Oh, like shit. Really? Thing. Oh, wow. I will leave you at the western borders of the forest. It is crazy how well integrated Mary and Pippin are with uh, Treebeard. Like, there's really hard to tell where Treebeard begit, like the CG Treebeard and the, the actual physical props. The know. fact that they pulled off Treebeard is pretty incredible, just yep. story-wise. It would have been very easy to make him goofy as fuck. And just, well, yeah, like, that's why they, you know, they leave out Tom Bombadil, but one, I think one of the reasons given was Treebeard's essentially character-wise the same thing and way more important. Well, yeah, I mean, you you can't get the resolution for Isengard and everything without Treebeard, so yep. kind of indicative how much work would have gone into him. And the fact that it's not even all CG. Really need to go back to that because it would be cheaper. It's, 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 it's smarter. It's working captured. smarter. And it's better. It's working yep. smarter and, and it's yeah, it's cheaper. Oh, and that model getting fucked up. It looks so good. I ain't gonna hey, swap. Because there, go. there he is. Listen, there okay, is. I love Gandalf. He's great, but he's still a little far away. Like we <laughs> come no, on, buddy. These are these are that's shadow facts. He'll show him the meaning of haste. Yep, it is a fast horse. Uh don't if you're watching Br Braveheart, look in the backgrounds of the fights there. They're it's hilarious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, For the king! Oh hell yeah. 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 That's a steep hill. Yeah. Not steep enough. Needs to be yeah, steep. Yeah, the home of the horse lords, baby. That's right. It would have been a bit awkward, that. though, if the front line had Look tripped. Look at that. Damn. Beautiful. Again, though, the amount of reason and setup to have this as a payoff, but everyone else like is trying to copy them a lot. Uh, I know. Never well, works and, as well. And, and, uh, you compare this to the end of Endgame, and this still <laughs> looks a thousand times better. <laughs> music yeah that first rider is kind of jumping over that's so fucking badass not looking good saruman release the river that's a nice oh, that combination so miniature that yes. looks, oh, you know models. no that's good oh, i bet that's a model too the water coming down that whole side looks there. bloody gorgeous yep. oh, Look at this looks so good. great oh, run! Let's all it. water is our friend oh there he is I like how he even runs to the water. He's not even waiting for it to get to him. <laughs> Look, it takes okay, them all out. You know, when Return of the King starts and they go into all this like flooded area, I always think like, what if you accidentally fell into one of the giant holes? Oh god! <laughs> I guess you could swim back up, right? That looks so good. Oh, if they yeah, fully flooded go. it, it which I guess so they good. did. Yes. And the music, they just everything, everything's. Mwah. Oh, and that was one of the scenes where they used the big ass. Yeah, ring, that looked like the big uh, ring. Yeah. In the yeah. Ground, yeah. Oh, there are God. some things you need to touch up in these movies if you're gonna do it, but man, it is interesting to see how over the course of the films they start to use more and more and more visual effects. Fellowship is a lot more restrained than you know towards the end of Return of the King. We've got well, these massive CG spectacles. So, I think part of it's because the story is just getting grander. We got a lot bigger armies and stuff involved. It makes too. sense that there's that, yeah. and it would also be just the development of the technology as well, because obviously yeah, yeah. all the films are shot back to back, but you're releasing them sequentially. It just gives yeah. you more time. Yeah, and you have to a plan. So you you exactly. know by the time you get to Return of the King, you're gonna have to you know. Around this time for films, it would be common for like 200 visual effects shots, but this film had about 1,500. <laughs> Man, it the looks so good. Look what just into this shot. Shot. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks completely fucking seamless. Yeah, that was awesome. The only truth, the brave and true. So for me, like 
It's so funny, you watch Lord of the Rings, you think it's amazing, and then you go forward however many decades and watch some new stuff where there's just zero subtlety. And then someone will be like, are oh, you just picking on it because it's new? It's like, no, you go to this old stuff, you're like, look, they have many moments yeah. in these films where they don't tell you what's going on. They show I don't know you. what to tell you, but the late 90s, early 2000s, there's a lot of good stuff was happening at that That's time. That's a fun right? era for, for media, yeah. Mm -hmm. What does your heart tell you? That Frodo is alive. Kind of like a transition era. Trying a lot of new things, synthesizing Transitioning the from, things. from the greatest trilogy ever made to everything else that happened <laughs> everything afterwards. Everything else. And that's pretty much it. They should have just packed it up. When they made this film, they were like, all right, we did it, everyone. We, we have film, solved no. the film has been film solved. Is over. Over. We, we have. <laughs> we, we yeah. have. It's, it's, not, cinema. it's, not, that, it's, it's not that cinema is kill. Cinema is salvation. It's redeemed. It's sailing yes. across the ocean, okay? It's graduated. Yeah, now it's <laughs> the new timeline is uh, B-L-O-T-R and A. L O T R <laughs> for and after. That's it. Did you see that uh criticism by the way, Gary, at any point that someone said that these these films are really cheesy with dialogue like he's a villain. He's a villain. It was a criticism that it was super like childish or something, or like but without realizing that that's like dialogue accurate, so to speak. Yes, like, dialogue uh, accurate from a linguist. Yeah, like uh, it, it's the kind of shit where you're just like, man, you know the Lord of the Rings is good when that's what you got, you know? Yeah. But that you don't like that he said he's a villain when that's accurate. Yeah, like it's, it's not absolutely Accurate. All has turned to vain ambition. He would even use his grief as a cloak. And even on like all the statues, I, I, I always fucking love these helmets that all these royal guards have up here. The spears, the way they look, it's so good. They look so cool. You they don't want to fuck like, with them. Yeah, they look like the you know if you're playing a video game, these are these are definitely a step up from your regular. Yeah, soldiers. this is what you yeah what you get to you, level uh, eighty and you can start working towards this armor that kind of thing. Yeah, this armor was the, high uh, stats for a uh, Barathord. Third age. Ah! And then over to uh, Gondor side of things. Not going I've so well. I've been fucking all night. Oh, yeah. It's morning now. Yeah. <laughs> Again, those fucking prosthetics they look fantastic. Sounds great. Uh, and just that all of the orcs look different as well. They don't look the same. They all have different facial structures, marks, and whatnot. Yeah. The age of men is over. This is apparently uh, the, the inspiration for Gothmog's look was after the Elephant Man. The armor looks so good. It's a shame yes. it doesn't work, but it looks so good. God, these noble horsies, they work so hard and nobody ever cries for the horsies. They knew what they were getting into. I don't know yeah. if that's true. Your father loves you, Faramir. If no, the horses didn't. didn't want to die, then they shouldn't have been war horses. You will remember it before the end. That's a cool statue. It is yeah, a cool statue. You will answer to the king of Gondor. It's one of the coolest swords fucking ever. It's not overly oh, exactly. complex and try hard. It just looks really good with a great design. It has confidence in its own just simplicity. It's not so it, it's it, not it not speaks overdone. for itself without it needing any flashy, unnecessary elements. Sauron will not have forgotten the sword of Elendil. It truly is iconic. That's the thing. Well, this, it, this oh, feels yeah. like the top tier base design for what a sword is. <laughs> it's a oh. long boy. The dead do not suffer the living to pass. Dude, I'm not even 100% clear on how they made the ghosts exactly, but they look fucking amazing. The several layers of like yeah. ghostly flesh. And then mm -hmm. they, yeah, get more and less transparent to see the layers. It looks so, god, creepy. The fact that they're like terrifying, they can get to everywhere, and the scream just being like crippling to everyone as well. Yeah. They're trying their hardest, but I mean, they are outnumbered. And being plucked and dropped. That's so what I mean. They do a really good job of making the minister side powerful, but also essentially getting destroyed mm -hmm. like yeah, this is this is not a weak vulnerable. force but what could they do there's so much Gandalf's the <laughs> really getting into it well, well, yeah, someone he, asked he, he, yeah he realized like he's the main source of morale for all of these guys yeah. I fell off you know, that one guy who fell off it's like oh shit get yeah. all the way there what a jerk get all the way there I'm just it's not this, taking long and already <laughs> this is kind of funny to think about it's like yeah this will do it those towers, man, you gotta get rid of them. They're so fucking good. I like how you can just look up the best scene of any movie on YouTube, and this <laughs> is what shows up. This is pretty hard to top. We did talk about this at one point, I think, that this is just such an easy pick for the best part. Especially the visual as well of all the 
people of Rohan seeing, like, Minas Tirith is in desperate need of help. I mean, there's so many shots that look like paintings. Yeah, like, this just looks completely natural. Oh, yeah. That, Even that, that shot of him right in front of it. Yeah, it's all CG, but, like, the way they do it, it's just so fucking good. Right now! What could be said? Uh, <laughs> the, the, this is this cinema. This is, is this cinema. It's the synthesis of visuals, music, acting. This scene, this scene fires me up. I want to go into battle every time I see it. Yeah! This is, where, oh, this is no. the perfect leader to send them into basically doom. Yeah. Also, Theoden's speech is better than Aragorn's. I feel like this scene, in terms of an influence, so many movies want to do the charge, but they're never this good. Yeah, and they oftentimes aren't as justified. No, it's, they, uh, like the Infinity War, that one makes well, no Endgame. fucking sense at all. That, and Endgame. Not even that made sense. This one makes, like, this is the best one. It's the best one. Yeah, it I, has I, I can't so imagine much build up this. to it, too. And, like, the way that everyone screams death, and it's just, like, this thunderous noise of thousands yep. of people's voices. Well, it feels like we've earned the triumphant feeling that this scene evokes of everybody being amped up and ready to fight to save the world. So many dying here and the momentum doesn't change at all. Because the look on their faces after yeah, this volley. Yeah, they real scared. Like, oh shit, uh oh. Oh, look at him! Ah! Yeah! My boy. <laughs> the fact he actually did that on a horse was just like, yeah. damn. Yes! <laughs> Oh, the way he gets up and the wings mm -hmm. still, uh, so still, cool. still convulsing a bit. Uh, the reveal of the chained mace. Apparently that thing was so fucking heavy that it like all of the takes were like every single shot had to be like done a new take almost. The fucking, it's the flowing of his whole outfit, the screams, yep. the music, the look of him is yep. terrifying and badass. <laughs> She's so outmatched. She's Ow. broken right there. That's what I mean. We're, we're back to the low again. We're losing hard. Oh, you remember, you see the ships and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. Like three of our important characters. Yeah, head on head. It's head on head. <laughs> <laughs> they have a one six scale of that character. I have it. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> do you ever pet the top head? I, uh, every day. For luck. Perfect. <laughs> I love how fucked up she looks. It's so many movies, like, they just have to make sure that the actors still look pretty. And it's like, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Always have our makeup on. Always have the hair did. It's like, nah, she's been fighting a battle. I love how they, they kill him so casually. Yeah, it's just like he's just one another of the orc. The scum tried to knife me! You like how they try to avoid showing his mouth with those words because it would never have worked with the teeth he had. They look so good. They'll never look bad ever. They'll always look amazing. God, it looks so good. Like the the model. Oh, that, yeah. I guess they use for that and the oh those yeah. I've always those statues were always so creepy. Look like Geiger. Vultures. Yeah. My master sound on the grave. Oh look at this fucking guy. Brush your fucking teeth. I like how Aragorn's just like this guy's ugly as fuck. Bruce Spence was in uh the prequel trilogy, Mad Max, Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> 